Hi everybody, we are here today with a litter update video from Van Isle Labradoodles. This is the afternoon tea litter and these are medium Australian Labradoodle puppies and they are five weeks old. So today we're going to go through each of the puppies, give you an update on them and what they've done over the past week, a little bit about the litter overall and what they've been up to and also a little bit of information about Mama Labradoodle Maisie. Hi, I'm Claire and these puppies are just out of the bathtub. They have had their very first baths. And now that they've had their baths and been blown dry, you will see a lot more about the changes in their coats, which we'll talk about with each puppy. So we're going to do the puppies in birth order, as we always do. And this is Red Collar Boy, whose name is Atticus. His papa has already named him. In this litter, we just have three puppies. Atticus is going to a pet family home. Pink Collar Girl is going to go to some lucky family. And then we have our little Raisin. And we'll have a special story about Raisin, but Raisin is not going to a family yet either. Hello, sweetheart. So Mr. <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Atticus, he is now 1.77 kilograms, doing great. The puppies are all eating raw food now. Uh, they still have some goat's milk and they also are starting to drink water. So they are all enjoying their raw food. So far they've had turkey, beef, lamb, some fish, and quite a bit of tripe. Tripe is currently the favorite thing that they have, isn't it? Yes, oh yes, you love your tripe. Now Atticus is a phantom tri puppy, and by that we mean that he has these beautiful tan points, which you see over his eyebrows, on the side of his face here, on his paws, and under his vent as well. And then the tri part comes in because he has all of this gorgeous white marking here. So he has white on his face, up on his head, over on his collar here. He has white on his paws, white on his bib and his tummy. And he has an adorable little white tip on his tete. Oh, he's just so cute, isn't it, Atticus? Atticus is a lover. He is one of the cuddliest and coziest little puppies ever. And what these puppies have done this past week is they have started to go outside. So because there's only two of them who are big enough to go outside, Raisin is not yet big enough to go out, we're putting them out with Gigi's puppies. Now Gigi's puppies are mini Labradoodles. These are medium Labradoodles. However, they're all about the same size at the moment. Gigi's puppies are a little bit smaller, but not too much. So they all fit in really well together. They're just 24 hours apart in terms of their actual chronological age. So it's a really good combination. They are also side by side in our nursery, so they're quite accustomed to the scent of one another through the X-Pan. So it's not like these are strangers to them at all. So what the puppies have been doing by going outside is they're learning to use the ramp and they're also learning to go outside and have fun and play around. Now today, Maisie's guardian family is coming to visit her and they are also going to have a chance to visit with the puppies. So we will take Atticus and Pink Collar Girl outside and let them be on the grass for the first time. So it's always lots of fun the first time when the puppies go out on the grass because that's quite different from being in, on the gravel, which is directly out the, the doggy door, and to spend time with two kids and two adults that they haven't met before is a really great socialization experience for them and also something that they're really going to enjoy. These guys just love when people come over to visit with them and play with them, right? Yeah, so that's Atticus at 1.97 kilograms. Next is Pink Collar Girl. Hi, Pinky. Here we go, Atticus. Pink Collar Girl, you can see she's giving us a nice little tail wag when she comes in. That's something I really always like to see in the puppies, and she's immediately curious about the toy. The puppies have only just started to play with toys. At five weeks, they're playing with each other quite a bit. They interact with each other regularly and also with Gigi's puppies. Play lots, um, no growling or barking from these guys yet, and they're just starting to interact with toys and learn what those are about and how to eat microphones. 
Jones. Yes. So pink color girl. She is like her brother Atticus, a chocolate phantom tri. She has the same markings as he does, just a little bit less white on the face and the head and not so much on the back of her neck. No, that's not quite so much. No, <gasps> but such a beautiful girl. Pink Collar Girl is also incredibly snuggly. She really enjoys when she gets picked up. She really likes to have her tummy rubbed. She likes to be held and she's just crazy about playtime when she gets to go outside and run around with the other puppies. She just thinks that is so much fun. Don't you little girl? Now let's take a look at Pink Collar Girl's coat and we'll have a little talk about what's been happening with their coats this past week because she's uh, got a good representation of it. First of all, chocolate Labradoodles, along with all chocolate dogs, their coats lighten. So because um, they're on these dogs here, you can see when we lift their coat up, there's a slightly lighter color underneath there. That means they're going to have uh, more of a milky chocolate color as opposed to a dark chocolate color. And you can see what I'm talking about with pink collars, temperament there, how our tail's going. That's something I really enjoy seeing. And you can also see that she has all sorts of swirly durlies and all sorts of things happening on her coat here. And that's because her coat is starting to lift. So this is when her coat, we see it's starting to get fluffy, full, and when her waves come in. So now they did just have their bath, as I said, and they, were, um, they had the blow dryer. Uh, Atticus was not fond of the blow dryer. No, he didn't think that was a really good experience at all. <laughs> Pink didn't mind it. But you can see how her coat is really lifting here. She doesn't have hardly any flat spots on her coat anymore. Just a little bit here. And you can also see that she's mouthing me. And we have already started working on bite inhibition with these puppies because their teeth are through. And when we do that, we have them and we just start interacting with them like we are right now. And if she chews on me, I'll show you. We go, ow! Ow! And you see how she's like, oh, oh, sorry. Because that's how puppies communicate with one another. What you don't want to do is pull your finger out like that because then that becomes a game. Dogs like to chase. So you just let them go and go, ow! And then she's like, oh, okay. And normally what we do then is redirect them to something that is okay to chew, such as a toy. That's what we want you to chew on. Because of course they're chewing like crazy right now to get those teeth through while they're teething. Now because these puppies are five weeks old, they are all eating raw food and enjoying that. Uh, and we're going to start to introduce bones to them as well. So this, time, uh, this week, we will be introducing them to chicken wing tips. Perfect for puppies. We feed them straight out of the freezer. That way they provide a lot of nice soothing to the gums for the teething. It also stops the puppies from gulping the bones down because they're frozen solid. It also makes the bones last longer because they can't bite through them as easily. But chicken wing tips are a nice small size. The puppies can manage that size. They can hold them in their paws. They aren't overwhelmed by them at all. And they also are a nice softer bone. So because they're softer, they don't need to have all that jaw strength to get through them and eat them. And yes, they eat the whole bone. They eat the skin, they eat the flesh, and they eat the bone. And that's where all the benefit comes in. So not only do we get the benefit of a good teething thing, and that provides them with some relief from teething, it also gives them tremendous mental satisfaction to chew away on the bone, because dogs are gnawers. That's a natural behavior for them. And it also gives them all of that much needed calcium in the right combination with other minerals because all puppies need calcium to develop a really good skeletal structure. So it's a win, 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 win all the ways around. The only thing that usually happens is that um, the mama Labradoodles get very annoyed that their puppies have more bones than they do and they try to steal them all the time. So right now the mama Labradoodles are eating turkey necks generally during the day, chicken necks, lamb neck slices, they have pork rib bones and they have beef rib bones as well and if we can convince them we give them some sardines whole fresh sardines not fresh frozen um, some of them really enjoy the sardines some of them are yeah don't no, not so much not so much right so the puppies are doing great they're really doing well pink weighs 2.11 kilograms so she is now the biggest puppy in the litter and that's our pink collar girl and we're going to go from the biggest to our little tiny guy Hi, Raisin. Hi. 
So this is Raisin. And Raisin looks pretty funny because he got a bath too. His coat is lifting really well, but he looks a little <laughs> bit like he's really been electrocuted because his coat is really sticking out. And the toy is bigger than he is. But you can see he's working away on my finger. He's, his teeth are not through yet. So with Raisin, eating the raw food is a bit challenging for him because he doesn't have the teeth to work at it with. But you can see this little guy's personality. Oh my goodness, talk about a warrior. He doesn't care that the toy's bigger than he is. He's the only one out of the litter who just picked it up and is really interacting with it. So he has absolutely no de developmental issues in terms of his mental cognition. He is doing just fine. He is now up to 720 grams, uh, so he doesn't weigh two pounds yet. Yet. Um, so there are still some concerns um, with respect to his size. We have no idea what's happening internally. So we don't know how his organs are developing. He hasn't been to the vet yet. Uh, we will be doing that shortly and then we will be running a series of tests on him. Sometimes when puppies are very small, even though they appear to be developing perfectly fine, there is something wrong internally. So this is part of the reason why Raisin will not be placed with anyone initially uh, until we have gone through many, many tests with him and just determined what his overall all physical health is. He may be perfectly fine and he may live a great long life and just be small. We all have our fingers crossed for that. Or it may be that his lifespan is somewhat shortened because there has been something that's happened to his internal organs. So we just have to wait and see on that. But while we have him with us, we give him all of our love. He captures everyone's heart. He truly is an amazing spirit and we feel so lucky to have him as part of our lives right now. Nothing's more fun than hanging out with Raisin. And when he got his bath today, <laughs> it uh, he, Reynolds said oh, he needed a pre-soak <laughs> because he was one crusty mess <laughs> from walking through his pan. We still put out pablum and goat's milk for him because like I said, the uh, raw is a little bit hard for him to negotiate without teeth. So we also give him a special puppy canned food that's called puppy mousse uh, that's really high protein and calorie to help him out. And we also let Maisie hang out with him on his own for a little longer. But this is just the coolest little face in the world. Yes, oh my God, is gonna bite my nose off. I imagine that he's going to just be the biggest spoiled brat in the world because nobody ever says no to Raisin. We just let him get away with so many things and he gets all sorts of extra little kisses and laughs, don't you? But I mean, how can you resist? So we're hoping that <laughs> even though he's still so tiny that everything else is just working fine but just tiny inside. <laughs> I think that's your new toy is my nose. Yes I do. So he's doing well when we, we are well able to accommodate his special needs. And then uh, we won't let him outside yet. He hasn't gone outside yet. He doesn't interact with any of the other puppies yet. Um, we will make sure that he is socialized well. Taylor has a really small little dog, a little mini um, Australian Shepherd dog in uh, Finn, and she also has two really tiny Chihuahuas. Uh, so they're all just a couple of pounds, those dogs. So thou, they will provide great company for Raisin once he's, well, he's going to have to be about three times as big as he is now. I'm not sure how long that's going to take. Um, last week he was 507 grams, so he's gone up to 720. So that's pretty good. Um, but still, it's slow and, um, and he's not an enormous boy yet but uh, once he has uh, and I'm not sure if he'll have shots at seven weeks he may not be uh, quite large enough to be able to be vaccinated so we will not be taking him outside or exposing him to anything until he is a little larger with a little bit more of a robust immune system and has some vaccines.
So that's our litter update for the afternoon tea litter. Sorry we spent so much time on raisin, but that's who we get asked the most about. So trying to give everybody the information that they're always asking for about him. Uh, next we are on the 30th, uh, Atticus's dad is coming to visit him. So that's gonna be lots of fun. Uh, Pink Collar Girl will partake in that visit as well. And uh, Raisin will just stay in the, in the house as I said. And if you have any questions about Raisin or anything to do about Labradoodles, any comments, please go ahead and ask away in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up if you have a moment. And thanks so much for watching.